follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok so you never miss a teaching. Facebook, Varula Haprasit, and New Hope International Church. YouTube, New Hope English. Instagram, New Hick. TikTok, New Hope International. Pastor Dan, I would like to greet you from the ancient city of Corinth in Greece. And we are so proud of you that you are seeking the things of God. And we pray that God will really pour His truth, His favor, and His anointing on you while you are listening to this teaching. I have the good news to tell you. God's plan and purpose in your life cannot be stopped by anybody as long as you walk by faith, you trust Him, you follow Him, and live for His kingdom wholeheartedly. I want to read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9 to encourage you. And because I preach this good news, I am suffering and have been chained like a criminal. But the Word of God cannot be chained. The Apostle Paul was called by God to be an apostle and to preach the good news to the Gentiles because the Apostle Paul was sharing the good news and helping many people in his generation to be born again, to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, the devil was not happy with him. The devil wanted to get rid of him. Therefore, he was put in prison. The closer he got to his destiny, the more obstacles he was facing. He was alone in a dungeon. It looked as though God had forgotten him. But the truth is, God still sit on the throne. He still worked behind the scene and God still worked with him. God knew what is best for his life. God knew how to use him to impact the world, even to this generation, many thousand years later, and to the international people like me, I'm Thai. The ministry of Apostle Paul really impacted me. Paul did not feel sorry for himself. Paul did not complain while he was in the prison. Paul did not blame God. Since he could not go out and speak publicly, he thought, okay, no problem. Even though I am chained, but God still working with me, I will start writing letters to the churches. He wrote nearly half of the books of the New Testament, much of it from a prison cell. Even though he was in chains, his enemies could not stop what God wanted him to do for the kingdom of God. They thought they were stopping him, but they caused his voice to become even amplified. He wrote many letters and now become a New Testament that all the people in the world who believe in Jesus could read and could grow spiritually. Some 2,000 years later, we are now, we still feel Paul's influence by the leading of the Holy Spirit. What they meant for harm for him, God used for good. This is the way God works. Sometimes when we face obstacle, persecution, rejection, and wrong treatment toward us, God can use it for the good of His kingdom and for our life as well, so that God's plan for our life shall be fulfilled. Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, talk about Joseph. Joseph was sold to be a slave in Egypt. Joseph was lied about, and he was put in jail. It sounds bad. It sounds like his situation looked worse and worse and worse. But Joseph knew that God's plan for his life, God's calling for his life that God gave him in the dream when he was young shall be fulfilled. He trusted God. Genesis chapter 50 verse 20 say, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. We should remember the scripture, even though things look bad, but eventually, God's plan will be done in our life. Believe me, this will happen to you as well, that no matter what happened, the rejection, the misunderstanding, the persecution, 
cannot stop the plan of God in your life. God will turn it around and make it good for His kingdom and for many lives in this world. God wants to use you to be the light of the world, to be the salt of the world, and to be the blessing to the nations. Let us have our goal that we're going to be the blessing to the nation. We're going to walk according to God's plan, calling, and purpose for our life. And our life will make a positive impact to people in our generation and the generation to come. This is a high level of Christian walk. We want to be an eagle. We walk in the level of high faith and high calling that God has for us. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 say, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose for them. I believe you love God. I believe God has a calling in your life. Find your calling. For example, for me, even though I was born in Thailand, I was born as a Buddhist, but eventually God called me into the kingdom of God. And God called me to be a pastor of a local church in America. My original English language was not that good because I studied French when I was in the Catholic school since I was a young boy to high school. But even though it seemed like I could not be a preacher in English language, but God loved me and God worked together for the good for those who love God. God sent so many people to help me to correct my English language. And God helped me to understand more how to preach in English. I'm not perfect yet, but God still worked things around so that His purpose for my life will be done. When I met the file of God in 1996-1997, I was misunderstood by so many pastor friends, and I was rejected at that time. They thought that I am a false teacher. But even though I was rejected by the church organization, by the pastor friends, Eventually, God turned around and allowed me to spread the fire of God in Thailand. The bottom line is this. No person, no circumstance can stand against our God who put the calling and the purpose of God in our life. No bad break can keep you from your destiny. Right in the midst of difficulties, you can shine and be a bright light and have God's favor as Paul did. God can use you even in the difficult situation to be the blessing to the nations. Let's us live that way. Seek the kingdom of God first. Trust God. Live for the purpose and the calling of God. Be the blessing to the nation. Live good, godly legacy to the next generation like Paul. And definitely the devil will not be happy with you. He will try to send people to persecute you, talk bad about you, gossip about you, try to stop you. But the good news is, no one will be able to stand up against you. Joshua chapter 1, verse 5 say, No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. As you live for the kingdom, God promised that, he will never leave you, nor forsake you. No one can come against you. He is fighting the battle, fighting the enemy for you. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 25, No man shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will put the dread of you and the fear of you upon the land, of all the land, where you tread, just as He has said to you. God is with you. And God will give you victory eventually. God will use you to be the blessing to your family, to your friend, to your church, to the nations. No matter where you are or who you are or where you find yourself at this very moment, you will likely have reached a point where you question what your purpose in life is. You might be going down a career path which feels unfulfilling. Or maybe you have only just begun to search 
for your purpose in this world. Either way, rest assured in knowing that the Bible says that God has a plan for you. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit. You need to offer your life as a living sacrifice. I did that in 1985. I gave my life to God and say, let your plan be done in my life. I surrender to you. I offer my life as a living sacrifice. And after that day, God let me step by step. And no matter what happened around me, bad or good or misunderstanding the attack of the enemy, God still keep going with me and lead me higher and higher to fulfill the calling of my life. God has a plan for you. That's what the Bible say. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. When you can no longer control what happens, and the things of this world, you will start to realize that there is something much bigger, greater out there than your own plans. God is bigger. He is the master and the king of the whole universe. He will help you. And no matter what happened, He is still in control. You can no longer rely on your own wisdom alone, but you can rely on God. You don't rely on your own smartness your own plan, your own education, but you rely on God. You depend on the Lord. Job chapter 42, verse 2 say, I know that you can do everything and that your plans are unstoppable. God's plan are unstoppable. That is in good word translation. How about in another translation, the Bible says in Job 42, verse 2, New King James Version, I know that you can do everything. I know that God can do everything. Let us trust God. Let us believe that God is in control. And as we walk with Him, we are in His palm. We follow Him. Even though we fall, He can pick us up. He can help us. He can do everything. And that no purpose of yours, of God, can be withheld from you. Wow. Do you trust God? that His purpose for your life cannot be stopped, cannot be hindered. Even though sound like you are in the chains like the Apostle Paul, but God still can use you and bless you and give you favor. The scripture tells us that He has already overcome the world and will never let anything get in the way of His purpose for your life. Our God is a victorious God. I want to encourage you. Cheer yourself up. Be joyful. Believe God. Trust God. His purpose for your life shall be accomplished. You just trust Him, follow Him, and don't get upset. Don't blame Him. Don't complain. Isaiah 46 verses 10 to 11, I make known the end from the beginning. God knows what is the beginning and what is the end. He knows from the beginning to the end. From ancient times, what is still to come? He knows the future. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. This is the declaration from the mouth of God. From the east, I summon a bird of prayer. From a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that will I bring about. What I have planned, that will I do. Wow, this Scripture encourages, let us put ourselves in the palm of God, in the plan of the living God. His plan is for the good future, is for the blessing to the nations, is to use our life to have the godly impact on the next generation and on the people around us in this generation. God's plan for us is to prosper us, is to Help us to have a super abundant life and to be effective and fruitful for the kingdom. He has detailed plan for our life. Let's walk with God with faith, trust, love, and no matter what happens, we believe He will continue to fulfill His plan. He will get it done and we eventually will get to our finish line. Eventually, 
we will get to where God wants us to be. We are running the race and we get to the finish line. God is Almighty. He's so powerful, and the wisdom of His word will never fail. Please find peace in knowing that the love of the Lord endures forever, and His counsel shall stand no matter what. Just follow Him, be led by the Holy Spirit, keep trusting Him, and doing His will. Live our life for the kingdom of God, and He will. Provide all of our need, and no matter what happens, His plan shall be fulfilled eventually. Psalm 33 verse 11. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever; the purpose of His heart through all generations. One day, God spoke to me, "Son, do you know that I am the greatest person in the whole universe, heaven and on earth?" I'm the king of all kings. Do you trust me? Do you believe that I have all power? Do you believe that I am more powerful than the devil and the enemy and anything in this world? Wow! When God spoke to me like that, I have faith. Oh yes, God! From now on, when I pray for the sick, I believe you are more powerful than that sickness. From now on, I can have peace and joy. I trust you. You are in control. And I'm gonna serve you. I'm gonna serve the King of all kings, the King of the whole universe, who the greatest has the highest wisdom, the highest power. He knows everything. He is omnipotent. He is omnipresent. God, I am your servant. I'm gonna live my life for you, Lord. And I don't have to worry because the purpose of your heart, through all the generation, will be done. I trust you fully, Lord. Nothing will ever stand in the way of God's purpose and destiny for you and me. God's destiny for your life shall be done. At the end of the day, despite what the world may say and what other people may talk about you, or what people criticize you, or what you might think, or what the devil try to deceive you, try to illusionize you or deceive you. God has destined you for great things, as you can tell with all this scripture. On purpose and destiny, you are a child of the King of all kings, and the Lord of heaven, and you have been called according to His word. He will never let anything stand in the way of His purpose for you. The question is, do you give your life to God? Do you want to live for the kingdom of God? Do you want to find the purpose, the calling, and the plan of your life in the kingdom of God? Are you willing to walk step by step like Abraham, walk step by step into the promised land? You are willing to walk by faith. If you can do that, eventually God's plan for your life shall be fulfilled. You do your part. Give your life to God. Surrender to God, trust God. You say, God, I offer my life as a living sacrifice. I'm gonna live for Your kingdom, and God will do His part. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 say, "For I know the thoughts that I think toward You," says the Lord, "thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give You a future and a hope." This scripture tells you and me that there is a plan for you and me in this world. I find the plan of God for my life already many years ago, since 1985, and I'm still walking in that plan. I'm still running the race in that plan, and really enjoy it. Oh, I even say to God, if you take me from this world to heaven today, I will not regret at all. For all this year, I'm walking with you, serving you, helping a lot of people to come to know you. Oh, the, it's the most fulfilling thing in my heart to know the plan of God in my life. I live this in this world for the plan of God. If I live for money, I live for the building, I live for the car. It's just waste of time. It's useless because those things are not eternal. I want to live for the eternal kingdom, and I know that God has the plan to give you and me a purpose in this world. 
the Lord loves us so much. I want to encourage you in this teaching to live for the purpose of God. And even though you are chained like Paul, but you are not bowed by the kingdom of darkness and by bad people, God's purpose continue to flourish and be done through your life no matter where you are. Father, thank you that you are the most high God and that your work in our life is greater than any change that might try to hold us back, Lord. Thank you that what has hindered us in the past is not going to hinder us anymore. We believe that your word cannot be bowed in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to encourage you to pray with me, a prayer of commitment, to give your life to God and to live for the purpose and the kingdom of God and to declare faith from your heart that you trust God and God will make sure that His plan for your life is fulfilled. He is with you. He never leaves you. He never forsakes you. Why don't you pray with me right now? I'm going to lead you to pray. Father in heaven, I love you, Lord. I trust you. I want to offer my life as a living sacrifice to live for your kingdom. I seek the kingdom of God first. Lord, show me your plan and purpose for my life. Oh Lord, I believe that no matter what happened around me, you will continue to work behind the scene for me. You go before me you never leave me, never forsake me. Lord, we want to run the race to the finish line. We want to be the blessing to the nations. And we want to be a part of the great commission. And you will take care of us, Lord. You shall provide for us. We are in your palm. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Please listen to this teaching again and again to build your faith and understanding and make sure you listen to other teachings in this series as well and many other series. I like to teach everything in detail and in systematic way so you learn many subjects in the kingdom of God. God bless you, loves you. Thank you so much for listening to the whole teaching. I believe the Lord is so proud of you and He will bless you so much because you are the seeker of the truth of God. May the Lord give you anointing, power and grace to practice what you learn and you shall be the blessing to the nations. I would like to invite you to listen to other teachings in this series and other series as well. Believe that the Word of God is the medicine to your life and you shall be healthy and strong. God bless you. Jesus Christ, I command that you are healed from sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, your curses are broken and you are free from the bondage and you will be filled with the blessing of Abraham that will overtake you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the poverty have to leave you and God's blessing come upon you. May the Lord shower into your life His grace, His blessing, His joy, His faith, His goodness, His favor, and you shall know the Lord your God in the intimate way. You will be the people of faith that the Lord will answer your prayer and God will get all the glory. I command that the mountain in your life must be made flat have supernatural breakthroughs in your life. The provision, the healing, the victory of the kingdom of God shall follow you and you shall be His witness in this generation. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jehoshua Hamachim.